All right, so that's freaking great. That's why you gotta love live though. Ah, what's up, ladies and oh, gentlemen? What do you like, like? Um, no idea why I was trying to do with the whole uh, what do you call that sideways shit? This is landscape, vertical, whatever. I don't know what the terminology for it is, but Facebook wouldn't let me, so I started a live, and they told me to flip the camera over or some nonsense, yada yada yada. Um, but here we is. Um, just want to let everybody know. Look, I'm out the sling. I'm out the sling. No sling on me right now. Feeling a lot better. Feeling good. Um, going to physical therapy and shit. Yeah, I still can't move my arm above my head. But hey, one thing is better than the other, right? I'd rather be able to do this. I I know it's kind of you. Really don't know. I'm still in pain. I'm not gonna lie, but it's not that bad. Not as bad as like last week. Like when I did last week's call. I didn't want to let everybody know, but I was in excruciating pain, man. Excruciating. It was killing me. Um, but got past that. Here we are. New week, new day, bunch of different stuff going on. I'm super duper excited to be back at the helm. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I honestly wasn't up to doing this this live. Um, it was one of those days, you know, you wake up it's like in a caca mood and... and Things weren't going or aligning the way I wanted them to. But again, like I said in the prior ones, yo, having your daily tasks list and having goal set things ready, having things in writing, knowing that things still have to get done no matter how you feel will help things get done, period. Um, and that's that actually assisted me today in a big way. And... Um, now I know I've stayed mainly in the mental and emotional aspect of this whole thing. I'm, um, I've had people ask me, you know, all right, when are we jumping into the financial stuff? Cause I know that's everybody's greatest concern. And I even had a discussion today with my cousin Buddha. We were talking. He was like, you know, what what's calling you to do more? And I'm like, I'm stuck between the physical and financial aspect of moving forward, but I still have some mental things that I want to get out the way. And being that there is no true format, like no one tells me what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. It's I let it be more spirit guided or, you know, stay in line with with what goes with me as I'm in this process. Like I told you, I'm not teaching something that I'm not practicing. I'm, I'm going through it. And while going through it is that I'm sharing it. So we're going through it at the same time. I'm not ahead of anybody. I damn sure don't feel like I'm behind anybody because there's nobody to be behind. You know, my only competition is Guapa Valley the Dawn, a.k.a. the man in the mirror, a.k.a. God's favorite is you know what it is. Uh, but yeah, so one thing, I that, continuing the mental aspect, we're going to go into the physical next. I, I am going to touch on financial stuff. Trust me, it's coming. Just give it time. Um, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. And I, and I got good shit cooked up for that. Um gonna talk on on getting your own businesses started getting your own online stuff started as i'm going through it as i'm learning it as well but also aspects of getting yourself in line because we a lot of us know how to make money but we were never taught how to how to use money how to correctly have money work for us and not the other way around you know we 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 are so emotionally driven I myself included, like I'm an emotional buyer. You need to know what you are. There's some people that are logical, some are emotional. I am a very emotional buyer. I've forced myself to be logical. So when I got that inclination about these new sneakers I love, right? And they cost $190. It's like, I should just get them. Y'all really want them. But I know logically that doesn't make sense. It's not going to lead me to where I need to go. And I'm not telling everybody to be a hoarder and just hold on to your money, but you have to develop boundaries with yourself. And that's actually where we're starting today. We're talking about boundaries and therapy, right? And different forms of therapy. I don't want everybody thinking like, oh, he's gonna just talk about kooks. But I'll touch on that anyway. So let's start off. Again, I got notes, man. This ain't shit just top of our head. Like I I'm 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 you know doing my fly shit here and there. Um but for the most part, I'm going off my notes. Um, boundaries. Now, what boundaries are and what they aren't. So let's go into what they are. Boundaries are, for the for the simplest explanation of it, 
it's not just boundaries like let's say like a property boundary or 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 moral boundary no no honestly boundary is where your responsibility ends and someone else's starts so that goes into that aspect here's what happens people always assume they are owed more than what they are owed that's all of us are like that we always had that tendency yet not all of us have the right boundaries put in place to protect us from that and when i say protect i really mean protect us from that it's a perfect example would be even relationships with our parents a lot of us do not understand that yes our parents are our parents but they are human beings in and of themselves like they they are selfish for themselves they have different ideas different beliefs and that's cool you do not owe your parent a damn thing many people don't like hearing that shit but you genuinely don't like do i feel like i don't owe mommy and heidi everything of course i do like i, I of course i got that feeling but i also know not for nothing mom you chose to make me i didn't choose to make me you know what i'm saying so at the end of the day that was your choice now you deal with those consequences it sounds fucked up it sounds really mean but it's the honest truth. You don't owe anyone anything except for your child. That is how I feel. You made a choice to have a kid, different ball game. Until some motherfuckers is of age or whatever the shit is or whatever you want to hold it to, they are your responsibility. Outside of that, you owe no one anything. You need to be very careful. You know what I'm saying? Um, A, a good idea. Look, perfect, perfect example. Somebody's like, oh... What you said really hurt me. You hurt me. They had it right in the first place. No, no, no. You hurt you. I didn't hurt you. You made a choice to let these things hurt you. My words are my words. You are by no means governed by them. If you don't want to pay attention to me for some other shit, you wouldn't let it be. But you choose to let certain things hurt you or bother you. So regardless if they come out of my mouth, Jesus' mouth, Gandhi's mouth, I don't know. They are your choice to decide whether or not it's hurtful. That shit does not bode over well with a lot of people. They look at it like, what are you talking about? So if I'm four feet two and you call me a midget, I'm not supposed to get hurt? Not because I called you that. You get hurt because you feel like a midget. That's on you. If I'm four feet two and I you know, I know there's people out there that are four feet one, I'm guessing I'm tall. Like, you understand? It's really, again, a choice that you make. It's a decision you make. Don't let anybody ever make you think that you have to do anything or you have to go this route. We don't have to do anything. No is a choice. Like, I'll speak on Buddha again. Buddha has said that before. He wishes he could say no like I say no. And it's something that I've worked on. It's not like I just woke up out of nowhere and be like, I'm just going to say no when I feel like it. Nah, I don't like saying no for no reason. I like saying no because it means no. It's it's a powerful statement. When it's no, it's no. I have no responsibility to say yes to anyone. You know what I'm saying? If my phone is ringing, it could be my mom. It could be mommy on the phone. And I'll look at it and say, hey, I'm pretty busy right now. I made the choice to not pick up the phone and I have no qualms about it. I know many people will look at that and be like, oh, how would you like it if Penelope did that to you? Yo, Penelope, do what you do. If Penelope sees Tata calling and she's like, oh, you know, I don't really feel like speaking to my dad right now and I get hurt, that's my decision to get hurt. She is in no way bound to picking up my call. Is not there nor here. You have to set these boundaries too. A lot of people let people just drag us left and right, drag us left and right, do whatever it is that they want us to do because we have this set mentality that, oh, well, it's, it's mom. So, you know, I have to. You don't got to do shit. Point blank, period. Um, God made you to be yourself. You know, is it is it hard for us as parents a lot of times to look at our children and know that that they are their own human being? Of course. You, you remember, a human being is a selfish creature. We naturally feel like I made this, it is mine. You know, but when it comes to making another human being, they're not yours. They're God's property. You know, not yours, but that doesn't bode over well. A lot of people I said it before. Um, another thing is when when saying no, you do not have to explain why you're saying no either. Like that's weak. That is weak. 
You understand? You don't owe anybody anything except for your kids. All right? So, for instance, hey, Johnny, you know, I, I want to come over on Friday. I really, you know, want to show you this book that I'm writing. And I say, no, it's no. I have no reason to be, no, I can't because I'm uh, picking up my sneakers. I don't got to give that explanation. Now, do I have to have some compassion with certain people and, and do explain what it is? Of course, you, you got to know how to discern that. But that comes with setting proper boundaries from the beginning. Once you understand where, again, your responsibility starts and theirs, I mean, your responsibility ends and theirs starts, it makes it a lot easier to make these choices. It's not something that happens overnight either. It's little by little, step by step. I still have people in my life that I don't have those boundaries with. Me, me, Johnny, like everybody's like, what? There's no way handsome deals with that. No, yeah, there is. There's people in my life that I, you know, have a tough time saying no because of some maniacal responsibility I've placed on myself in my head. You know, it's not like I'm perfect at it, but I'm continually working at it, especially when I start to really notice it. Like, I'm naturally a given person. I'm, I'm a compassionate person. I'm, I'm, I come from, I'm cut from my mother's cloth. It's how we are raised. It's how we are made. It's just, it's in our blood. Literally, it's in our blood. Like, so it, it, it was a struggle at first until I realized, like, nah, like, let me tell you something. 1998. Let's go to 1998. Let's go 20 years ago. When I would be out till 11.30 p.m., right? Mommy was very liberal sometimes. Um, and mommy needed to reach me? She had to wait for me to call her from a payphone or have the number to a friend's house, something like that, right? So this now is a convenience. And I've spoken on this before. So if you've heard this from me before, cool. But it is a convenience now that we are able to communicate with people 24 hours a day. So we have to look at it that way. We can't get upset if someone doesn't answer our text right away. We can't get upset if someone is tweeting at the same time or posting pictures on IG at the same time. Yet we just called them five minutes ago and then they pick up the call and we're like, huh, how dare you? You know, I've gotten that before from people and I look at the text like, all right, whatever. Yo, I just saw you post a picture on Facebook and, and, and I texted you, you didn't write. I don't even respond to that because I have no need to respond to that. It's not my business to respond to it. That's not my problem. Stop tracking me down. Again, maybe I don't feel like talking on the phone at that moment. Maybe I'm considering you at that moment. Maybe I didn't speak to you because I know when I speak to you, it requires a certain amount of attention and devotion that you need because I care for you that much that I'm not going to give you some half-assed time of mine. You know what I'm saying? So, But we got to start, again, that goes back to the reframing aspect, reframing everything. Not everything is against us. Matter of fact, everything is for us, no matter how we, if we start viewing it that way, whether it's true or not, right? Because then people are going to be like, that's not true. That's the Guy, if you start to see it that way, it'll start to become that way. It just makes life a lot easier, a lot easier. Let's see, let's see where we're at, man. I spoke on that. Yeah, listen, again, using discernment, using compassion. You, you have to be guided by your spirit. Listen, if you know, for instance, I'll give you a perfect example. My pops, I rarely speak to him, right? Now, I'll speak on that later because of the therapy aspect, but a lot of that comes from not having him present in my early life, right? He, he was in the music business. My parents split when I was four. He chose music over Johnny. So at a certain age, I was able to separate the two, like between, you know, not disrespecting my father, but I just don't owe him anything. And that's how I see it. Right. But I know he's a trucker. I know he has a tough ass life. Like your man is on the road from like, I would say three in the morning, doesn't get home until like 8 p.m. at night. That's a tough life, especially five to six days a week. Right. So. Even though I see him calling and I don't pick up sometimes, there are days where I have to use discernment. I have to say, today's Wednesday. I know Wednesday's his roughest day. You know, I have to use somewhat of compassion. Maybe he needs to speak to somebody. Maybe he needs to get something off his chest. I'll pick up the call. You're not always just going to be the no king. Like, come on, man. It's not right to operate that way. Um, you have to use discernment. You have to use compassion. You have to be led by the spirit. There's times where your spirit is going to tell you, even when you don't want to say yes to something, right? It's going to say, just say yes. Just say yes. And you have to know when to listen. 
But again, that's why developing proper boundaries is so important because you have to know when that's your spirit speaking or your suckerness. Don't be a damn sucker. Life is not going to do anything for suckers. You know what I'm saying? That nice guy fitness and last shit, that shit is a thousand percent the truth. I'm not telling you to be a bad guy. I'm not a bad guy. I'm probably one of the nicest guys I know. But everyone that is close to me knows Johnny has his boundaries. You know, they, they understand and they know it's lovingly. Like they know I'm not just some asshole for no reason whatsoever. They know I love them. I care for them dearly. But I also have my boundaries and I have no problem. I have no problem physically telling the person like, yo, 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 whoop, cheer. you're in my space. You understand? I, you're in my space. There's no reason you should be in this space. I have no qualms, no issue whatsoever. And it's not even like on some like rough guy, tough guy fight. I'm not a tough guy. It's you're in my space. Respect my space so I can respect yours. That's another thing. Like you, you know, in order to, to receive respect, in order for your boundaries to make sense, you also have to respect others' boundaries. You can't be the person that you know, constantly texting calls people and gets mad at them for not picking up. Yet when it happens to you, you're like, whoa, 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 I got my boundaries, baby. You can't be calling me all the time, expecting me to pick up. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't look, lo que va bien, loco. You understand? Um, now, I also know it's not, like I said, it's not easy developing these boundaries, especially if we spend a lot of our times in life without boundaries, without that, um, that said respect for ourselves. So this is why I call this one boundaries and therapy. And this is where I think therapy is a huge benefit to all of us. And I know, listen, I know a lot of people, especially Especially like minority communities. I know growing up, the moment anybody mentioned that they were going to a therapist or or, or a psych a psychologist, matter of fact, let's call it a counselor because everybody wants to call it crazy. Let's call it a counselor, right? So anytime somebody was going into counseling, which shouldn't be bad to anybody, like that just means that you need to be counseled. Who does not need counsel? Like who doesn't? Who? The president has coaches. The you know everybody. Your 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 father's a big time business owner, right? He has somebody that he seeks and speaks to when he needs counsel. We all need it. Like people think, oh, oh, you need therapy. You're broken. Yeah. Who who besides Jesus was a thousand percent unbroken? And nobody, chief. You guessed it. So we as learned people, you know, everybody trying to seek knowledge and trying to get out of the matrix need to start respecting that term and really taking it serious and i know sorry man my arm's hurting <laughs> speaking of therapy when's physical therapy today assholes they're like oh well you gotta wait till next week um like yo man i'm in pain now this shit gets all tight sorry anyway um i know like a lot of times we're afraid to mention that we need therapy or whatever we need counseling but Nah, man. I, I mean, we already know, we see the epidemic of mental illness out there. Why would we assume that we're free from it? I know a lot of people turn a blind eye to it, especially with themselves. They don't like to admit it. They're like, nah, I'm good. I'm just, I'm just going through something. Yeah, you're going through something? Seek help. Seek help. They even got text therapy now. How crazy is that? I haven't used it. I'm, I'm looking into different therapists right now at the moment, actually, because I will not go into 2019 without a new therapist. I had a therapist years ago. Amazing man. But I want to really like dig deep. I want to go to the core of a lot of things. Um, and I know, especially in the, in the Christian faith, right? I'm Catholic. So in the Christian faith, Christianity, we we look down on it sometimes as you're trying to heal through someone else. Like, that's what you have God for. You pray, you speak to God, and he'll heal you. Now, let me ask you this. If you are such a devout Christian, right, have you seen that in the Bible, aside from the Old Testament, God comes down into somebody's fucking living room and says, hey, man, listen, I'm going to cure you right now. We really need to help you get over this fucking past infliction you have like you know the whole thing that happened with your father when you were six years old let's let's erase that no <laughs> everywhere in the new testament and as of late god works through people he develops 
fellowship. I've had this argument with a couple of Christians where I'm like, you gotta understand something. Do you think God would allow for there to be people with the talent of actually sticking through and learning how to be a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist and, and developing this talent if he didn't mean it for his good as well? Anybody that read The Purpose Driven Life knows we are meant for fellowship. We are meant to seek each other's advice. We are meant to help one another. That is how we get closer to God. God uses people. He uses us. He's using me at this moment, right, to get ahead. And oh, people are like, oh, you, you said this wasn't a God thing, man. Kiss a bucket, all right? The universe, right? We need to really dig deep and see that. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with being flawed. I think everybody that that you've admired, especially as an artist, has become admirable because they've admitted their flaws. So why is it okay for your favorite singer to talk about depression and, and heartbreak, but it's not okay for you? Are you idolizing these people? Yeah. So a lot of the damage and the inability to, to, to put up boundaries comes from unresolved pasts. Um, I was watching a video the other day. I think the guy's last name was Lipton. I put the, the, the video up and he was talking about from ages zero to six, how that is when we are shaped by our experiences. And he says, the child mind from age zero to six is what's called theta stage. Theta stage is actually where your mind is at during hypnosis. And he says, this is where our subconscious is formed, where it learns how to operate, right? Not the conscious self, but the subconscious. So he speaks on that. And we don't realize it, but a lot of our reality, a lot of our character, a lot of the way we respond to life has come from those little moments from age zero to six before you're even in fucking first grade. And what happens is this. How many memories do you have before five or four? I have a lot. I have memories to like two and a half. I'm not going to lie to you. It's fucking weird. Um, I've gotten them a lot in dreams and stuff. And then I've, I've backed them up with mommy. Like, yo, did this and that happen? You mean the the kitchen with the kid did? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. You know, so... But for the most part, we don't have a lot of those memories. Yet, a lot of who we are was created in that time. So we might have forgotten things that happened in that moment, whether they be good or bad. But that affected the person that we are today. I'll give you my example. Like, if I'm really going to dig deep, I'm a person that's had a lot of relational issues in the past, right? And... I started to really, really dig deep, which is another another aspect of therapy and the many different therapies. I think therapy can be done between friends. It doesn't always have to be paid therapy through a therapist and whatnot, but even having conversation with family and friends is therapeutic. You have to choose the right people to speak to. But I, I look at it and having a conversation, actually it was one of my exes um, who were close friends and whatnot, we were talking about her life. And... I, again, I'm I'm gifted in that aspect. Like I know that's that's one of my gifts is understanding people, digging deep, really getting into information. And she was speaking on something, and it it led me to understand myself better. And I was just like, "Holy shit!" See, my parents split when I was four. I said it earlier. My dad, you know, was a musician, but in ghetto and shit like that. It wasn't working out. Mommy said, "Yo, go do your thing, man. Go live your life." He took live your life to another extent and totally like ditched me, um, would visit me. Not my, my dad's not a bad guy at all. One of the coolest dudes you ever meet. I am so thankful for his genes being in me because I know a lot of my charisma, a lot of my knack for singing, my, my, my entertainment ability. I see it in my daughter now. All that I know stems from him. I don't know who before him, but I know I get that from him. So I'm very, very proud of who my father is. I know God don't make mistakes, baby. He know who he set me up. He 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 equipped me for this moment. You know what I'm saying? He equipped me for this moment. Um, E.T., the hip-hop preacher, said he, he had a video the other day about that shit. And it was just like, yo, it just got, it was so deep to me because I knew it at that moment. I'm like, shit, that is me. You understand? So my father's a very cool dude. But... Again, he was very in love with the stardom. He wanted to be a big star, and he was. For his time, he did really good toward South America, toward DR. Everybody knows the New York, bunk, 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 bunk. You know what I'm saying? That was my dad. Um, and when given the choice, 
He followed his heart. He followed his passion. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? But it caused damage that I never saw until I got older. Right? So as a child, your parents, are, even now as adults, to a lot of you, your parents are perfect. Let me tell you something. Your parents ain't fucking perfect. No parent is. I'm not perfect. But other people are going to look at me and put me on a pedestal. And I'm going to have to stop it sometimes. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Data is not perfect. Matter of fact, that does like okay. You know what I'm saying? I got, you know, but we we believe that our parents are perfect. So what did my young mind do? Never blame my dad or my mom for their separation. God forbid. I can't blame my dad. As a youth, I blamed myself and his wife. Well, his his new girlfriend at the time, who then became his wife, who's now the mother of my baby sister, who's only ten years younger than me. But you know, um. I blamed her because that's what kids do. God forbid a kid has to, to know that the person that they glorify is imperfect. And it didn't hit me till I was older and saw my relational issues. And, and you know, again, I have a lot of friends and I'm helping them. They're always seeking me for counsel. Like, so I was going over and saying, I'm like, oh my God, this is why I can't relate. How would I be able to relate? I never saw relations. You know what I'm saying? I never saw that aspect. So in seeking the love that my mother never got, Right, because as a child, your mom is your number one. So I would try to replace that love in any way possible. So I would always see, I guess, my mother situation and other people, and no matter what, I'm fully loving because my mother was fully loving. That caused damage to my relationships because sometimes, you know, out of love, you can cause pain, man. Hurt people, hurt people. Remember the Joe Budden line? Um, so that's why, had I gone to therapy, I mean, listen, like I said, therapy comes in different ways, but I, I want to go to therapy for that to really have somebody, even like hypnosis, just take me back to those moments and figure out where in that timeline, where in that timeline did Johnny go wrong, in a, in a sense, right? But I've worked on it on myself, thanks to God, and, and that understanding of life and whatnot, it's worked out for me. Um, but by God's grace is that, you know, I understand that, Therapy is necessary, whether it's with a friend, whether it's, you know, I said, pay, look, the different types of therapies, you have paid therapy, which is your psychiatrist, psychologist, you know, counselor. You have support groups nowadays, like these are things that you can all do even online, right? Now they have online therapy and support groups. And number three, which is my favorite, is friends and family, right? So intimate moments with friends and family, you know, you have to, let me see, you can receive therapy while giving, yeah, that's another thing. When I was talking about that, how I was helping my friend, and I, re I received therapy by giving therapy. You don't always have to be whole to work things out. Like uh, Joyce Meyer said that message one, well, make a mess out of your, make a message out of your mess, da, da, da. I know a lot of people said it afterward, but Joyce Meyer was one of the first preachers that I saw ever speak on that. Um, you know, you have to be able to, to confidently know that there are people you can rely on. That's why I tell people, whenever you're going to seek someone to, to assist you in this, make sure it's someone you trust. Make sure as well that, and we all have somebody in our lives, whether you can pinpoint it or not, we all have someone in our lives that is achieving what we want in one of the peace pillars. So whether it be financial, spiritual, emotional, physical, someone there will have that. So if you're seeking if you notice, you got to really, really have self-awareness. I spoke on that before. You have to know where it is that you're effing up. Like you have to know where you're effing up. You have to use these, these keys, these keys and dig deep. You can't continue to be blind. It's not going to work. That's why therapy is so dope. Because when you do go to a professional therapist, right? They know they're educated in this. They have doctorates in this. So they know what buttons to press, where to go, what level to go to. Like you walk into a therapist's office because, you know, you have problems smoking, right? You're like, oh my God, I'm addicted to nicotine. They told me that this guy will help me get over it. It's because of my anxiety. Let's get over this anxiety. You sit on that couch and he goes, what happened with your mother when you were six years old? And you're like, nothing. My mom is dope, B. What are you talking about? Now, it's a probing question, right? But it'll start leading him into figuring out who your mom is. And that's something we need to do with our own friends, our own people. Like, we have to ask real deep questions. Like, yo, let me tell you something. 
That's been one of the biggest benefits of Purple Cups and Champagne, my podcast. If you're not subscribed, go check it out. Um, But it's been that. Like, before and after every show, we deep dive. Like, my friends and I, we are not on some surface level shit. It's not like, yo, let's meet up, talk sports and bitches and stupid shit. Like, no. It's like, yo, what's up? How you feeling? How you been? What's going on at work? I know you had this prior problem with your aunt. Is everything okay? Is she treating you right? Is she being good to her, to your nephew or whatever? Whatever it is, right? We dig deep. Before the show, we're there talking politics, we're talking life, we're talking personal things, we're talking relationships. The show goes on, we do our things, we dig deep there. After the show, we're sitting around, we're laughing, we're talking, but we dig deep. We had a deep session, I think was the episode, the last episode, this is before my surgery. And it was that, it was like, yo, but what's going on with this and that and da-da-da-da-da. And I started talking and I let go. I'm a person, yo, I'm an open book, right? So it makes it easier and more comforting for others to open up to me as well. That's another thing. You have to, we have to work very, very hard on being authentic, letting it go, being vulnerable. There's no reason whatsoever for you to always put up a front. If you're feeling it, let it out. Again, be very aware of who you're sharing this with. Can't be just any Joe Schmo like, oh my God, man, I'm so sad because, you know, when I was a kid, my aunt used to punch me in the back of the neck. I don't know, whatever it is, you you have to know who you're speaking to. Again, this is why you have to discern who's who and what's what and really seek out, you know, good counsel in your own friends and and, and family. Like that's, that's one of the biggest reasons why people need therapy. I think it's just because not enough family speak up, not enough friends speak up, not enough real, real interaction happens. I have built trust with so many people and, and have garnered that kind of faith in, in who I am as a human being. Like people know I'm loyal. They know they can trust me because I'm trusting. Like I, you know, I'm, and I'm caring. Like, I'm naturally just, again, empathetic. I'm a caretaker by nature. So when I see somebody and I I see that they're off, their aura's off, and we're chilling, we're doing something, we're having fun, I don't just keep it there. Trust me, a little while later, I'll scoop up and ask you, yo, what's going on, fam? Everything good? Like, you you seem a little bit out of it, man. You can talk to me. You know what's up? Like, da-da-da-da. Or I'll open up with something that's happening with me because I know that that's the way to open somebody up and let them know, like, yo, I'm not here to bullshit, like, Here's my facts. Give me your facts. I'm here to help you out. Um, you know, like, I, like, when's the last time, especially for all of you out there that are dating and shit like that, when's the last time you sat with somebody and said, so tell me about your relationship with your parents? When's the last time you did that? When's the last time you did that instead of, uh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm the perfect human being, you know, I really love jazz music, I'm just so giving, and, you know, I just care about everybody, you know, nah, sit there and open up, be like, yo, what's your relationship with your parents like? Like, me, personally, I, I, I don't really get along with my pops, it's something I'm working on, something I'm looking into, I, I felt like he abandoned me, people are so afraid to do shit like that, they're so afraid, like, oh, I'm not gonna be vulnerable, like, why not? What's this person gonna do, chop your head off? No one has power over you except for you. That goes back into the boundaries thing. Like, you got to realize you are the controller of everything. No one can make you upset. No one can make you sad. No one can make you nothing. You make you that. Whether it be by choices you've made in life that allow someone to call you something or whether it be by you just having this perception of yourself in your head that allows others to trample you. You make that decision. No one else makes that decision for you. Um, before we go into my, I have a game we're going to play. I'm going to let you guys know about the game I play with myself. Pause. Um, we talk about it. Um, I want to go to the last part of this and this is back to, okay. So this is the mental, emotional, probably getting out of this. That's it. Next thing I'm going to go to is physical, but I want to get back to journaling. Um, in the prior sessions, I've told everybody, you need a gratitude journal, you need a self-reflection journal, right? And you might have a personal journal for other reasons, whatever it may be, but you got to think about this. When you were younger, you had the capacity to retain so much. Why you didn't have responsibilities on your plate like you do now as an adult. So as you get older and responsibilities take hold of you, There is not enough space in your brain to manage all this information. 
There really isn't. And the people that do it well are the ones that know how to delegate certain things in their lives to others. So that way they can work on what they are powerful at, right? But if you don't have that ability of, of delegating certain responsibilities to other people, it you have to journal. Like there's just so much capacity to deal with shit in our head. It becomes a totally different ball game when you're able to write things down, right? Ba ba ba. You know, let me see, put it there. Because not only now by it being in writing, I was having a conversation with, with uh, Chelsea yesterday about that. And she's like, where, you know, I got to figure out, I forgot what she had asked, but I know I put it into that term. Like, how are you tracking it? Like, are you writing certain things down? Because now when you see things in writing, hence why I do my tasks list the prior night before and stuff. So I know what I should be doing the next day. So whenever I'm lollygagging or, or letting my emotions get the best of me, bang boogie, man, I grab that index card and I'm like, and it just gets me back in motion, right? So again, not only does it take things out of your head so that you have space to be more creative and really focus on other things. But it also makes things trackable, trackable and, you know, gradable. Like you can say, yo, you know what? I said I was going to put all these sessions on YouTube. Perfect example. I wasn't doing it at first. Yesterday when I was talking to Chelsea, I was like, oh, shit. If I wanted to share a certain video with somebody that's not on Facebook, I can't do that. Well, here we go. I need to put it on YouTube. What was on my task list today? Upload sessions to YouTube. Like I'm going to upload this one afterward to YouTube. Make sure I, I keep the YouTube up to date as well. So that makes it trackable. That that makes it so that when I know I have my list and I have things written down, like, yo, I'm going to update my YouTube and do this and that. I'm looking at it, right? So I know I don't have to have it stuck in my head. I can forget about it totally. But when I look at that index card, it's there. But while I, I free up that space, and it's literally how it works. I free up that space by writing that down. I'm able to focus on more important things, money generating things, which is where everybody wants me to go, right? And which is what I'm working on. But it allows me to focus on that in my head and have the creative space to look at different avenues, different venues. What am I not doing? What should I be doing? And then when I need to focus on uploading those YouTube videos, when I'm looking at my task card, oh shit, bang, knock that out, erase it off the task list. It's off my mind. It's already done. So you need to practice some kind of journaling and even creative journaling. Even if if you don't want to get into that, like there's people that when they doodle and they draw, they literally get their ideas out like that. And that's how they, they get their creative juices flowing. So I think journaling, having a notebook for certain things is very, very important. So sum it all up, boundaries, create your boundaries, make sure no one is taking up your time unless you want them to. Again, just because your mother thinks you owe her the world doesn't mean you owe her even a fucking street corner, my Z. That's not how life works. You know, just because, yo, your cousin is like, oh, man, you know, what about that time I lent you $10,000? All right, what about that time you lent me $10,000? That's not my problem, fam. You made that choice. I don't owe you my time now. As a matter of fact, I pay you back, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You have to, you really got to start creating boundaries to protect yourself. Without these boundaries, everything else you want to do, everything else you want to achieve in life is not happening. It's just not happening. I know you, you, you probably think like, why is Johnny beating a dead horse? I'm not. It's because we don't have these boundaries. I myself am looking into male coaching. That's something I'll speak on next week uh, when we get into the physical aspect of how they're trying to feminize everybody and nothing against women. Women are powerful beings, but men shouldn't be feminine and women should not be masculine to a certain degree. You also shouldn't be this ultra macho man or, or like super freaking feminine girl that anybody can just step on. Like, nah, you know what I'm saying? But we'll speak on that. Um, boundaries and therapy, man. Listen, if if you're ashamed, if you don't want to go out there, look online. Man. I think it's like $39 or some shit like that to do like talk space things like that, or really start surveying your friends. I did it last week. I told you guys to, to pick four or five successful people and that you really want to emulate that are in your circle. Find them. Maybe those people could be your therapy or do the same for therapy this week. Check it out, man. Um, start having real deep conversations with friends, associates, with your people. Don't, don't just fucking have meaningless small talk. Let me tell you something. If you over 30, 
Man, F that. If you're over 25 and you're still having small talk with your closest friends, you don't got close friends. That's it. Start. You better. You really better start working on your circle. Because small talk is ball talk, baby. That shit don't make no sense. Now, now that's all out the way. This is the task for the week. This is what I want everyone to do. And it's a game I love to play with myself. Pause. This is nothing to do with anything else. But everybody knows my favorite phrase is I love me some me. Um, if you know me personally, you know confidence is something I do not struggle with. Uh, well, at least confidence in my looks and shit. <laughs> um, even in my, my, my faultiest parts, I, I love myself. Like it's, uh, it's almost sick. I don't, know if, I don't know if that's held me back in a way. Maybe it has. I'll find out in therapy. But uh, I play this game. It's called the I Love Me Some Me game. So you're not going to always have the greatest day. You're going to wake up sulking. You're going to feel something. Or even in the middle of the the afternoon, like all of a sudden, you just get bombarded with some bad news, right? You get this bad news that they're repoing your vehicle. I don't fucking know. Some crazy shit happens. You're going to need to pick me up. And, And we have to... Again, brainwash ourselves. There's so much out there. The enemy is always attacking. Media is always making you think that things are going worse. This whole election thing is happening. You're feeling like, oh my God, if we don't get this and that. Like, yo, there's things always trying to attack your peace. You have to brainwash yourself and make sure you keep your peace by all means necessary, especially when there's people trying to cross your motherfucking boundaries. Simple as that. Because there's always people trying to cross your boundaries. So the I love me some me game. So what are we gonna do? Listen. You can rewind this later on, whatever, but this is this is the task. You're gonna play this game with yourself <laughs> after this call, whether it be today or tomorrow, but in the next 24 hours. That means matter of fact, the next 22 hours. You get this shit done by fucking seven o'clock tomorrow, or you're a loser. Just kidding. Alright, so you're gonna jot down the seven most recent compliments you have received. Now, if you hit me with the I haven't gotten the compliments since June, and before that it was like October 2017. Yeah, fucker, that's two. Keep digging back. Find the seven most recent compliments that you have received from someone else. I don't care if they just said, Hey man, nice eyes, Contreras. Whatever it is. Find the seven most recent compliments that you have received, right? Jot them shits down. Write them down. Reread it. Reread this list as much as possible. If you want to reread it three, four, 91 times, do it. But reread it. Really let it dig deep. Those seven compliments that you received, right? And then once you read them over on a separate sheet of paper, You're going to look at each compliment and factor in where in your life can you make this happen more. So if someone, for instance, gave you a compliment on the way you speak, correct? Your job would be to find, all right, where can I have more speaking engagements? Where can I find more chances to talk, right? So let's say you're big into politics and you speak well. Dig deep into political shit, right? Jump into political groups online. Grab your your politician freaking happy friend at work, somebody. And really practice on strengthening that compliment. There's seven compliments. Strengthen those. You know, if somebody said, wow, you have such a beautiful voice. Motherfucker, you better start booking studio time and recording songs. Right? And when you start doing this, right, you start empowering yourself. Because it makes no sense to always try to pick up your weaknesses. I know you've heard this before. I'm saying it again. Strengthen your strength. Your weaknesses, delegate. Your weaknesses, whatever. They'll pick up when they have to. But the stronger you are, your strengths, the better you are at being you. Because your strengths are the perfect identifier of who you are. They will always identify who you are. My strength is this. So that's why I've been making more videos. That's why I've been going live. That's why I've been doing the... the, Instagram stories and all that shit because I know it's my strength. Speaking is my strength. Expressing myself is my strength. Listening to others is my strength. Helping others are my strengths, right? These are all my strengths. So play that game. 
It's called the I Love Me Some Me game. If you need further explanation as to what it is, hit me up, handsomeisland at gmail.com. Message me, text me. Uh, don't text me, don't text me. I keep saying text me. You know what I mean? Like fucking message me or DM me on one of these social uh, media outlets. Um, ladies and ugly men, again, thank you for joining me this week. And we are done with the mental emotional aspect. We are. No, I might, I might, I might, might, might dig back sometimes here and there because I said everything connects, all the four pillars. And next week we are jumping into physical peace. I think, I think physical peace. Most likely physical peace, but maybe some financial stuff, but most likely physical peace. Uh, again, please continue your morning routine. Continue with the affirmations. Keep plugging in. Keep, keep going, going, going. Even when you don't want to, man. Even when you don't want to. I know a lot of you fell off with the with the task list. A lot of you fell off with the with the journaling and whatnot. Don't worry about it. You're not done. The year is not done. Continue it. Get the motion going. Get it rocking. Get it rolling. Momentum is key to you having a better 2019 and the rest of your life. Develop these habits. Make them your truth. All right? Ladies and ugly men. Love you all. Stay blessed. Stay humble. Stay favored. You know what it is. Here.